The compact SUV segment is really competitive in the US, and as a result, most of the vehicles in it are pretty similar in a lot of ways. And that's partly why the old Volkswagen Tiguan was never a huge hit here. It was a little bit of an outlier, a little too sporty, a little too cramped, a little too expensive. All things that meant it didn't really resonate with the type of very practical shoppers who usually buy compact SUVs. The all-new 2018 Volkswagen Tiguan aims to fix all that. For starters, it's way roomier than before. It's a whole 10 inches longer than its predecessor. There's also a new design inside and out, more technology, and a brand new engine under the hood. So with all of those changes, can the Volkswagen Tiguan finally make it in America? How does it look? This Volkswagen Tiguan is not the same one sold in Europe. Built in Mexico, it's specifically tailored to the US market, meaning it's a bit longer and more spacious. Like all modern Volkswagens, the Tiguan's design is really defined by strong, straight lines everywhere. The look has definitely been growing on me the more time I've spent with this Tiguan, although I don't know that I'd necessarily pick this habanero orange paint. But I do think the Tiguan has pretty good curb appeal. How's the storage? The Volkswagen Tiguan comes with three rows of seats. It's standard in front-wheel drive models like this and a $500 option in all-wheel drive ones. With the third row in use, you don't get much trunk space at all, just 12 cubic feet. But once you lower them, that expands to about 33 cubic feet of space, which is pretty good for the segment. And then if you fold down that second row of seats, you'll get 66 cubic feet of space. Again, pretty good for a compact crossover. Now let's see what that all looks like when we throw some suitcases in there. The center console storage bin is average sized, and there's a slot up front to store something like a phone. There are two cup holders up front, plus generously sized door pockets. Is it roomy? There's plenty of seat and steering wheel adjustment up front, with lots of space in every direction around the driver and passenger. The second row slides and reclines to adjust roominess, but overall it's plenty spacious for regular sized adult passengers. The third row, however, is not really habitable for adults. The seat cushion is just too low and there's not enough knee room for me to get anywhere close to comfortable. How does the interior feel? The interior is definitely one of the Tiguan's strong point, with a stylish modern design and great materials that definitely make this feel a half step more premium than some of its competitors. On this car in particular, I really like the full-color digital instrument cluster that I've got. I like all the leather appointments around the cabin, and the really modern, fresh look of the infotainment screen and a lot of the other switch gear in here. Is it well equipped? This fully loaded SEL Premium model has everything you might expect from a modern small SUV. On the inside, look for things like heated leather seats, a nine-speaker sound system, push-button start, and dual-zone climate control. Outside, there are goodies like LED headlights, a big sunroof, and a power liftgate. In terms of active safety tech, this model has pre-collision braking, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, and a 360-degree camera. How's the infotainment system? A 6.5-inch screen is standard on the S model, but all other Tiguans get this 8-inch touchscreen. It's bright, crisp, and responsive, with three USB ports, Bluetooth, and support for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can pinch to zoom on the built-in navigation screen, and I like that the context menus only show up when you move your hand close to the screen, providing a cleaner appearance. Is it a good daily driver? From behind the wheel, actually, the Tiguan feels a lot like the Volkswagen Golf, and I mean that as a compliment, because it's just very pleasant and easy to get in and drive. You just throw it into drive, get behind the wheel, and go, and all of the powertrain and everything just gets out of your way. I can reach all the switch gear easily, all the gauges are really clear. In fact, I was driving this car about an hour on the highway to get here this morning, and I was also really happy then about how little wind noise seeps into the cabin, how well the suspension ate up impacts from expansion joists and potholes on the way. In the city too, I find this car really pretty nimble, easy to park and get around. 
So on the whole, yeah, it reminds me of the Golf as a car that I can just get in and drive without fuss or without problem. And that to me makes it a pretty good daily driver. Is it fun to drive? As compact SUVs go, I actually think the Tiguan is pretty good to drive. Maybe not super sporty or maybe not the most fun vehicle to drive that you could find, but definitely up there with sort of the driving satisfaction I get out of something like the Mazda CX-5 or the Honda CR-V. The engine in this car is actually interesting. It's a new two liter turbo four, and it runs what Volkswagen calls the Budok cycle, which is basically a slightly different variable valve timing strategy designed to really prioritize efficiency, but also torque. So this engine has more torque than horsepower, 184 horsepower, but 221 pound-feet of torque. I actually think that's really good for both everyday driving and sporty driving. There's a lot of mid-range grunt in this engine. Whenever you put your foot down, there's plenty of power for passing. That's aided by this eight-speed automatic being pretty willing to downshift whenever you need it to. I also really like that the Tiguan has actually pretty solid, very responsive brake and steering feel. It definitely feels more like a car than an SUV. So all things considered, while sporty might be overselling it, I actually really do enjoy driving the Tiguan more than you might expect from a compact SUV. How's the fuel economy? Front-wheel drive models return 22 miles per gallon city and 27 highway, while all-wheel drive cars drop that to 21 mpg city. Honestly, that's pretty bad for this class of car. Rivals from Honda, Nissan, and Mazda all exceed 30 mpg highway. In fact, the Tiguan is only as efficient as the 250 horsepower all-wheel drive Subaru Forester XT, which returns 2327 mpg. How much is it? Pricing starts at 25,000 for a front-wheel drive Tiguan S and rises all the way to nearly 38,000 for an all-wheel drive SEL Premium. That's a little higher on the top end than some rivals, but the S, SE, and SEL trims are all pretty much in line with what you'll pay for other small SUVs. What are the negatives? The Tiguan's fuel economy ratings are behind the best in the compact SUV segment. And I think that third row of seats, it's fair to say, is really only good for occasional use. If you need three rows all the time, Volkswagen will also sell you the much larger Atlas SUV instead. Who should buy it? The Volkswagen Tiguan isn't necessarily the leader in terms of spaciousness or fuel economy or value for money in the compact SUV class. But I do really like driving it, and I do really like the design inside and out, as well as all the new features. It's much better suited for American customers than the old one. I think that if you're looking for a compact SUV, whether you're a single person or you've got a small family, you're going to be really happy behind the wheel of the Tiguan. If you like this why buy be sure to scroll down and click the like button and leave us a comment if you've got any questions about the Tiguan. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get a new why buy every Thursday, as well as tons of other great video content. You can also follow us on all your favorite social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course at motorone.com.